Hey everyone, it's Melissa Klug. I'm the co-host of the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. And today, Jen and I are thrilled to be bringing you a new episode with our friend Kate Grunke of Kate the Socialite. She is a marketing professional that works only with home pros. So she works with interior designers, professional organizers, and staging businesses, which makes her an expert in what is going on in our industry. She is a marketer at heart, and she believes that marketing Marketing isn't magic and it also isn't difficult. And if you are shaking your head going, uh, yeah, it is, I promise you this episode is going to bring you some great tips and tricks and really actionable things you can go do in your business. If marketing feels overwhelming to you, we would love to give you some ideas today to try to dial down that level of overwhelm and help you know that there are some great things you could be doing in your business to go find clients. So let's start the episode. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast with Melissa Klug and Jen Obermeyer. Thank you so much for joining in. Our mission is to broaden the horizons of savvy business women in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. So now let's get started. Hey, Kate, the socialite. It is so good to have you on our podcast. And Melissa's here too. So say hello to everybody, ladies. Hello. Thanks for having me. (laughs) So Uh, nice to be here. This is such a good conversation that we're going to have today because, so I was recently on Kate's podcast and here she is over here. We're kind of sharing with each other's audiences. But what is really good is that she is a specialist for um, many types of, many types of people in the home industry. Uh, we had a great conversation on over on her podcast. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go go listen. Where we're talking about this right now is such an interesting time to be in the home services industry. Um, now, Kate happens to have a business that specializes in helping people with their marketing. But just in general, Kate, can you kind of like speak to first of all what what is this like audience and environment like right now? Considering that so much of our life is going on at home. Uh, not just for our clients, but, you know, for, for your audience too. Yeah. So the organizers and stagers and designers and workrooms that my agency works with have been experiencing some pretty unprecedented results as, as a result of the pandemic, really. When the pandemic started, everyone was freaking out, understandably, because everything was shutting down. But what a lot of them did not expect, and honestly, what I did not expect, was that because all their clients were stuck at home, they realized how disorganized they were. They realized how ugly their kitchen is, and they realized that they needed everything updated right then and there, like as soon as it was safe to do so, as soon as they were allowed to do so. And the cool part is the virtual consultations were happening. I mean, it was like a firestorm on Zoom. And I'm surprised that Zoom could even handle it at that point. But I believe it was Forbes that recently wrote an article about how businesses have survived during the pandemic. And they said that the home service based industry has grown as a result of this. And that is just a silver lining in a very difficult year. So that's my take on it. Um, It's been surprisingly positive. Uh, That is a really positive thing. And I think that this is a great jumping off point to have this conversation because I think people wanna feel reinvigorated and have some hope like moving forward. So give us the background about your business and how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So. You know those rags to riches stories that people like to make movies about? Yeah, that's not quite me. Well, not (laughs) quite, but kind of. So I started my business uh, back in 2014, and I was doing writing and editing for businesses because that's what I was good at. I became a published author in high school, and I thought, this is my thing. This is what I am going to do. But what I didn't know how to do was market myself. And I also had very low confidence And all of those things just kind of snowballed into this mess of a business where my branding was so DIY and my messaging was just, I'll I'll work for anyone and for any price and I will have, you know, just like really low rates. And it was terrible. I had awful clients, but you get what you put out there, you know, and I wasn't putting out the right thing. My marketing was not on track. And 
I ended up struggling my way through it, lots of Google searches, lots of frustration, and I wanted to quit so many times. But my husband's actually the one who was like, don't quit, you have something here, there is something. And he was right, there was. So around a year and a half into business, I took a course called B-School from Marie Forleo, and she just totally rocked my business world because I realized I didn't have an ideal client. And through that, I was able to figure out that my favorite type of client was someone in the home industry. And from there, I decided to specialize, and that is what grew my business. And then I had to work on setting up my own sales funnels. So I went from having $4,000 in my bank account at the very beginning of business to now being able to say that I'm the main breadwinner for my family. And it is absolutely incredible. We have a team across the US now. Some team members are outside the US. And it, so much is possible, even with every roadblock you can imagine. Whereas like with me, my biggest roadblock or so I thought was a roadblock was I was from nowhere, Wisconsin. I'm still mm. living in nowhere, Wisconsin. <laughs> that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter where you're located or what your background is. Uh, I definitely came from the redneck area of the state, but it didn't hold me back. And so I just want to let all the listeners know out there, it doesn't matter where you are. If you have a dream, you can go for it. And I love what you're saying right now too, because I think right now it totally goes with what you said before about Zoom has given us this opportunity to be able to reach so many people. So now, especially professional organizers are not beholden to where they live. You can be a professional organizer in the middle of nowhere and organize someone across the country. Are you seeing a lot of people taking advantage of those opportunities? Oh, for sure. It's just crazy that we can do so much virtually. And I think the struggle that comes out of that is people aren't quite sure then, well, how do I market that? How do I price mm-hmm. that? And how do I explain the value that I'm giving? But no, it is a huge thing and people are definitely hopping on it. Are you seeing with the people, so on the pricing front, and we're gonna get into kind of your whole sales funnel idea in a second, but uh, I do think that there are a lot of people that are struggling with, do I price virtual the same as I price in person? What kind of services should I offer? Uh, Do you have any kind of thought processes around mindset about pricing and in-person versus Zoom and, and what kind of value that they're getting? Yeah, so while I can never say this is exactly what someone should charge, what I can say is a lot of it is mindset and a lot of it is confidence related. And it's something that we all have to go through as business owners. We have to realize that we can claim our space, that we can charge these rates as long as we are delivering value that exceeds those rates. I mean, you can charge whatever the heck you want. And there is actually a danger in charging too little because then you're just attracting the bargain hunters and nobody wants to work for a bargain hunter. So that's where your pricing actually affects your branding and your branding is a huge part of your marketing. So it's all connected. And that's why I cringe when I see people in the home industry offering free consultations. There is no such thing as a free consultation. You could do a discovery call, that's one thing. You're just trying to figure out if you should work together, but a consultation is where you're just giving away all your advice and your knowledge and like for nothing. So yes, everything is completely connected. Okay. So when you talk about the concept of a sales funnel within the home organizer, professional organizing group, can you tell us a little bit about what sales funnel means? What are the parts of sales funnel? Give us all that magic. Yeah. So the term sales funnel tends to scare people because they think that you need like really complex email automation sequences and you have to hire somebody from, you know, a different country to do it because nobody knows how to do it. No, it's actually so easy. A sales funnel is a fancy term for the path someone follows when they first find you or like know that you exist in the world to actually writing you a check or paying your online invoice and you get to control that path. And there is so much power in being able to do that, to say, I know where my next client is coming from, and I know that this system is working for me. So to answer your question of what does this actually look like? What are the steps? Step one, at least in our digital age, and especially during the COVID season, step one is often social media, but, Social media is not the end all be all. And a lot of people will say, well, I don't get leads from Instagram. I don't get new business directly from social media. 
well, that's true. You actually shouldn't because it's all about being social. So your social presence is a great way to get connected with people and help them get to know you because they're not going to really care about what you do until they actually get to know you as a person. So you're using social media for that. And that's why I tell people, post three times a week, be consistent. You need to be sharing photos of your work and of yourself and you know tips about organizing that can be like small wins for people because that is going to encourage them to get to step two of the sales funnel, which is your website, which means you need to have a good website. Now it doesn't have to be like your forever website because You'll get a good website. Two years later, you'll think, this is crap. I need a new one. You know, so it's the process that's never done. But if you have a website that is really speaking to your ideal client and not so much about your business, I see people make this mistake a lot. They have a website and all it does is say how great they are and it says nothing about how they impact their client. You need to have a website that says that you specialize in working with this type of client and here is how their lives are transformed once you're done organizing their, you know, whatever it is. But the big thing about your website is it also needs to capture people's email addresses. So you have to give them something that will entice them to sign up. A lot of times that is a branded magazine that explains how home, home organizing works, or it could be for some people a short little video that you made, you know, whatever is going to make the most sense for your ideal client. Once they are in your mailing list, that's where the next step comes into play, and that is the email newsletter. And when I say email newsletter, a lot of people just glaze over because they're like, didn't that get outdated like a decade ago? Well, no. So email marketing is 40 times more effective than social media. And that is a recent stat from HubSpot as of January 2020. So this is current stuff. And if people listening are not using email marketing, they are losing out on so much business that it like just makes me feel sick for them thinking about it. But with email marketing and email newsletters, it's something that you only have to send out like every four weeks. You know, I have some people who send it out every two weeks, but really what you're doing is just popping up in their inbox saying, hey, are you wondering how you can you know, make your pantry look Instagrammable just like all the other ones that you see? Well, here are a few tips on how to do that. And then you put at the end, you put a little link where they can book a call with you or they'll just hit reply and talk to you that way. But that's a conversation starter and that's where we see all these leads actually converting into paying clients. So that's a sales funnel, social media, website, lead magnet, email list, and then the newsletter. And we see this happen again and again with home professionals in the US, in Canada, in Australia. It works the same in every country. It is just a very simple, no nonsense way of converting leads. I have so many questions for you. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, so, all right. So let me start with something that you said about social media, because I, I think like many people, I have kind of a bit of a love hate relationship with social media. Like sometimes I'm really into it. It's super fun. I'm excited. Like yesterday I filmed a, a fun video that I'm excited about, but then sometimes I go three weeks and I'm like, meh, is it really getting me clients? So you're saying social media is essentially just kind of an entry ticket. It, it establishes your credibility, that type of thing, but it's not maybe the place where you're going to get your actual clients. Is that Exactly. And okay. I think a lot of people get burned out by social media because they think they have to post every single day and that if they aren't getting clients directly from it, then they must be doing something wrong or the algorithm hates them or, you know, something <laughs> like that. But that's not the case. And that's why I say post three times a week, like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, make it very doable because then at the beginning of each month, you could sit down, map out those 12 social media posts, just 12. Suddenly that becomes like, oh, okay, I could do that. And then make sure that each post is covering a category. So every Monday, you should be talking about um, one of your past projects. So you could share a photo of your work. Every Wednesday, share a tip. People love organizing tips. Every Friday, share a photo of you, your family, your team, a behind the scenes of you working with a client, whatever you want, because you need to make sure that you are establishing that personal connection and not just hiding behind photos of your work, because I see people do that a lot, more so in the interior design sector, but a lot of times we just discount ourselves and we make our Instagram feeds all about our work or worse, other people's work. And then we just become one big magazine and it does nothing. 
So yes, that's why I am always on a rant on my own podcast and everywhere else about social media because we can't look at it to be the savior of our business. It is just a small piece of a much bigger pie. Well, you're my new best friend by saying that because <laughs> <laughs> makes me very happy. One thing I think that people struggle with, I see this a lot in the professional organizing groups that I'm in, is people struggle with what to write. So people get very um, mm -hmm. concerned about, well, I need to write like 14 paragraphs of relevant information on social media. Like, are you kind of a shorter is better or somewhere in the middle? Where do you land on that? So I look instead at who is their ideal client? Because when I'm consulting with people through my membership and they're telling me, I don't know what to say in my social media captions. And then I tell them, well, actually the caption is more important than the photo. Well, that just freaks them out even more. Uh, but it's not really the length we're looking at. It is actually, are you speaking directly to your ideal client? Do you even know who your ideal client is? And when I ask people, who is your ideal client? They'll say, well, you know, anyone who likes um, organized spaces and I'm like well we all do so that doesn't really help you have got to narrow it down are you going to have a specialized service where you are only organizing pantries or you only do closets um, and it doesn't mean that you can't accept work outside of that but it does mean that that gives you something to market and then you can drill down even more and say well if you're only doing closets let's say you're doing like not just the hall closet, you're doing like the huge walk-in bedroom closets of, you know, let's just say you want to target the Instagram influencer who has so much clothes, so many clothes coming in every single month, she can't keep track and she needs someone to actually come in there and organize this for her. Well, now you're drilling down a little bit further. You're not just doing closets, you're doing them for a millennial, uh, female, um, she's likely living in this size home in this area and here are the social platforms she's on. Well, now you know which social platforms you need to be on because you don't need to be on a social media platform if your ideal client's not there. That would just be a waste of time. But now you know you can get on Instagram and you can talk directly to her. You are not talking to the mom who has messy closets because her three-year-old keeps rearranging them for her. You are talking to the millennial influencer who just can't keep up with all her packages that are being delivered. So that changes the tone of what you say in a caption and it doesn't matter so much how long it is. It's just, can your ideal client recognize that you're speaking to her? Because that is where a lot of people get tripped up on their marketing. I love that. Truth time. Did I catch you multitasking? Chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you're the type of gal that loves efficient ways to learn and stay inspired in business. Please screenshot this episode right now, post it on your Instagram story, and tag me at Pro Organizer Studio. Tell me and your audience that you're listening in, and together, we'll make Pro Organizers Everywhere more savvy and productive on the go. I actually know someone who ha she goes to the length of she names her ideal client and talks about that person as if she is a real person and it helps her. She is laser focused on what she's doing. That's so smart. Yes. All right. So website, that's another one of my big things. I'm super, I am personally super passionate about websites and tell us a little bit about some of the pitfalls that people get into. I love what you said about, again, talking to your ideal client and giving them the results. So can you talk a little bit about the magic of websites? Yeah. So when it comes to having a website, a lot of people are attracted to, well, it just needs to look pretty, but I've seen a lot of pretty websites that have terrible SEO. It's a terrible user experience. You can't find anything. And that is not a great experience for a potential client because if they're trying to work with you and they can't even navigate your website or they get to your website and let's say they can navigate it, but they really don't feel connected to you at all. They don't feel like you understand their issues or that you're gonna be there for them. That is great for you know increasing your bounce rate which we don't want um and a bounce rate by the way for anyone listening who doesn't know is when someone comes to your site and then they just leave they don't click around they just are like no this is not for me we don't want that what you need to do is make sure that your website not only speaks to your ideal client but that it ends each 
page with a call to action or a button of some kind that takes them further and further into your website. Now, ideally, you'll want them to go straight to your contact page and then reach out. But a lot of people aren't ready to do that. And that's why that lead magnet is important, too, because it's like, OK, maybe you don't need me now, but you'll need me later. Here's something free. Go on your way because I'm going to follow up with you. And that's just professional for one thing. But it's also really smart because email addresses are currency. And if your website is not uh, letting people sign up for something, if it is not collecting email addresses, it is not doing you any favors. And that's why going back to you can't just have a pretty website. It's a pretty website. It's just it's just sitting there looking pretty. That doesn't put money in your bank account. And I don't know about you, but I kind of like having money in the bank. So <laughs> yeah, so we have to make sure that these websites are functional, not just beautiful. And also that they don't look like everybody else's website. Because I do see a lot of websites and a lot of branding that they could all be one business. It, it, it is so blurred together. But that again goes back to when people are getting their websites built by someone else or doing it themselves or getting their brand created, they're doing all these things without going back to their ideal client. They're just, you know, they're picking the color palette they like. They're picking a website template they like. They're not thinking about, well, what's going to be best for my client? So we always have to go back to the ideal client. I love that. I actually, uh, I had an experience the other day of, I wanted to hire a photographer. I needed some new shots and I could not find a place on her website to contact her. I'm not exaggerating. I, oh, I had no. to click through seven pages just to even get to a contact form. So even just little things like that. So not only speaking to your ideal client, right, but making it a functional piece of your marketing. Yes. Um, so when you talk about that lead magnet idea, so making your website work for you, capturing those email addresses and email marketing. So I was fascinated by something you said, which is that you maybe only have to do a, a newsletter once a month to get that impact. What would you recommend? Would you recommend once a month or would you recommend a lot more than that? I would recommend sticking with once a month because if you do it more than that, you're going to irritate people. We've all been there. You know, I, there are some companies that email me multiple times a week. And even though I love the brand, I will still unsubscribe because I'm just like, this is too much. You are stalking me, knock it off. And yeah. the other issue is uh, I'll have people say to me, well, maybe I'll just send out a newsletter every quarter. Well, that's kind of a problem because do you remember any emails you got three months ago? I don't. And that is not a good way to stay top of mind. That's why what I have found is that every four weeks you are sending out this sweet short helpful little piece of information and it's enough to stay top of mind it's not enough to irritate anyone and it helps people get very familiar with seeing your name and your brand in their inbox which is far more personal than just scrolling through and seeing your posts on a social feed okay so can you talk a little bit about lead magnet is another one of those uh, phrases that I think is out there. Can you just dive a little deeper and talk about some things that you have seen home professionals use successfully as lead magnets? Yeah. Well, and first of all, the term lead magnet kind of sounds fancier than it is. It's basically just a way to attract new leads. So they use the term magnet because we all know what a magnet does. It sticks to things. It attracts other things. And the lead magnets that I have had the most success using for our clients and our members is what I call a branded magazine. And this is something that you can create in Canva. It's not difficult. I have had people hire professional graphic designers, nothing wrong with that either, if you have the budget for it. But basically, you make it look just like a shelter magazine. So traditional home or, or so domino or whatever it is, you can have the actual cover of a magazine but it's all about your ideal client and your brand and then you can have a welcome letter from you you can have photos of your team if you have a team and you can outline your services and even a brief like how we work page because now you're teaching somebody how to work with you versus teaching them how to go organize their own stuff because if someone is looking to hire a professional organizer chances are they've been down that DIY road and they do not want to go back because they don't get their projects finished so that's why unless you're trying to make money off the DIY market 
and I'd say most professional home organizers are not. They're looking for the people who don't want to do it themselves. Don't feel like you have to create a lead magnet around how to organize your closet in three easy steps because that's just not what they're looking for. They just want to know how will you help them? How are you going to do this for them? And can they trust you enough to bring you into their mess of a closet? Because that is also super personal. And that's why up front you have to establish that trust. So that's interesting because I would have thought like if I were just going to create a lead magnet, I would have said I would have gone more down that route of the three easy ways or here are donation resources or something like that. So you're saying be a little bit more aspirational and again, make them want to hire you. Yes, exactly. Kate, this is super educational, definitely for people who are intimidated by that term sales funnel. So now we kind of understand like, okay, it's not, it's not overly complicated. It's just leading your potential client down this path. This all sounds great, but talk to me like I am one of the super overwhelmed. I mean, whether I'm a professional organizer or not, um, you know, one of, one of you, someone that you would work with who is like just super stressed right now, where they're like, yes, all this marketing stuff sounds so good, but how do I multitask and get all this done? Like, where do you tell them do start here and forget the rest for now? Like, how do you simplify that process so they know what to work on first? That is a great question. And that's actually one I've gotten quite a bit lately. So the main thing you need to do is stick with the part of the sales funnel that has the highest conversion rate or, you know, the low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And that would be the email list. So if you already have an email list, you need to start sending out email newsletters. And this is where a lot of people will say, but I don't even have an email list. And I'll say to them, well, have you worked with clients? Yes. Okay, so you have an email list. You're just not calling it that. You need to go back through your emails, your files, your um, CRM or QuickBooks, whatever you're using, and export their names and their email addresses. Because if you have worked with them, you can email them. If you didn't work with them, but they contacted you, you can email them. Now, mm -hmm. don't go through the some sort of directory and like steal people's information and then email them because that would be a huge no-no. <laughs> I have a lot of people asking me if they can do that. And I'm just like, no, like, no don't want to be fined. It's, it's not good. But if you have worked with clients or you have leads, then you can certainly email them. Um, so that would be the part that I would focus on if you don't have a lot of time or you are overwhelmed, at least start with that. But, but even before that, I would say just make sure you know who your ideal client is. I mean, I love, Melissa, what you said about how um, someone you know actually gives her ideal client a name you know, a face, you can find a stock photo that you think really represents your ideal client, print it out, put it on your office wall, and just look at that and be like, all right, what does she need from me? How are my services going to help her? Do I need to repackage my services? Do I need to change the name of my services so they're more aligned with her? And then go back to that email list and create your first email newsletter. So it sounds like, and I love to be like super big picture and tie things back together. But it sounds like the number one takeaway from everything that you said is that, you know, when we as business owners are stressing out about the pandemic and how is it affecting business and how is it going to affect the home industry, that it really isn't, you know, when we're sitting here and wondering that for ourselves, like, am I going to continue to have clients? Like, is it worth investing in this marketing funnel? Blah, blah, blah. That sounds like the wrong question to ask because it sounds like what we have to do is get very specific in our minds about how... COVID is affecting our ideal client and then therefore adjust our marketing message to her and don't talk to everybody all the time because we can't possibly take into consideration like every possible circumstance that somebody might be going through. So that, that right there seems like it would ease some of the anxiety around how do I continue to market my business, which is a luxury in most every case um, dur during this time. And so to, I'm going to go ahead and put words in your mouth probably, but like if you are that mom that has a bunch of kids, then you need to be talking about the benefits of, of whether it's decorating or staging because somebody's moving or organizing the benefits as it specifically relates to her, not as it generally is like great for everybody. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Because then it becomes a conversation with that ideal client. And when you're just starting out and you've finally figured out who your ideal client is, it's not like they're going to find you immediately. But here's the thing. It is much easier to generate organic publicity for your business if you are a specialist in something 
versus mm -hmm. being a generalist. I mean, even look at the medical community. The general practitioners do not make as much money as the specialists do. The specialists are always booked out and there is a reason for that. So a lot of times when something unexpected happens like COVID, I've seen people add even more services to their business to the point where I can't tell what they specialize in. Mm -hmm. And now they have to market all these extra services, which really wasn't their intention at all. They thought, well, if I add more services, maybe I'll be able to keep my business afloat. But all they did was add more rocks to their backpack instead of mm -hmm. taking some out. And that's why, yes, to your point, you have to be very specific on who you serve so you can talk about your services in a way that relates to who you're serving. Mm, for sure. And I think too, going back to one of the things we were talking about at the beginning with the new possibility of virtual services, I personally would rather work with somebody who is super specific to what I need virtually than I would to have somebody general even come to my house and, and be working with me personally. I think I would get more out of that. I think I'd be more motivated to follow up on it. Um, and, and I think that people who um, start to think about their marketing beyond their local area um, really have to go all in on that idea of like, what, what specific problem do you want to be known for solving? Because that's like, that's a goal. That's so good. Is there a, I'm a, I will try to make this sound as polite as possible, but right now, obviously, there is a lot of, you know, kind of pain in, in the world, right? There are people that are having to homeschool their kids, and there's a lot of stress, and even if your job is okay, I think all of us have, like, extra stressors. So, is there messaging right now that you would recommend in talking to your ideal client in the home industry about how our services can actually help them? So, you're not capitalizing on the pandemic, but mm -hmm. you are saying, I have a service that can actually help you physically and mentally. These are challenging times. Do you recommend changing messaging right now? I do think that we need to be aware of how our particular clients are being impacted by this. So if someone's ideal client uh, is like a young family and let's say the kids would be in school, but they're not, the two parents both work, but one had to give up their job so that they could stay home and homeschool. Uh, yeah, that is a, an extremely difficult situation. So now is not the time to be saying, ooh, I'm running a sale on, you know, you're gonna get 20% off if you book now. It's like, no, people really aren't looking for a sale, but what they're looking for is someone who understands them. And if they're your ideal client, you understand them, or at least you should. What I suggest, and actually this is what we've done in the membership I run too, we actually created email newsletters that were specific to COVID that people could send out mm. where they were not selling anything. They were just okay. literally saying, hey, how are you? This is a really difficult year and I just wanted to check in. And I cannot tell you the crazy level of response my clients have gotten from those emails because they were personal. They were getting responses left and right and they were booking consults, which like they weren't even trying to sell the consults, but people were just so touched that a business would reach out and you know, there's no sale, there's no promotion, there is no angle except to say, I'm a human and I wanna check up on you because you're a human too and this is affecting everybody. So yes, I do think that we need to be careful uh, not to lead with a sale or a promotion, but I honestly, I say that even if COVID never happened, even if the difficult things in the world never happened, because we're not businesses marketing to people. We are people trying to have relationships with other people. And if the services that we offer are genuinely going to make their lives better, then we can approach them in a genuine fashion and not in a, like a car salesy, slimy <laughs> fashion. It's more like, I know you, I know your pain, and I have a solution, so let me help you. Tell us more about who your membership is perfect for and what they get. I want the details. Yeah, for sure. So my membership, which is Socialite Vault, is for people in the home industry, organizers, designers, stagers, fabricators, uh, mainly like window treatment fabrication and window treatment sales. But we set up sales funnels for people. 
and there are different levels of membership depending on what you need or what you can do right now and everything is just month to month no contract but we have the social media templates uh, lead magnet templates like a branded magazine client welcome packets email newsletter templates everything that you need every piece of the sales funnel that I have outlined we have and we also offer website templates now. They're not part of the membership, it's a separate thing. But um, everything that you need is there, so it's very much plug and play. But the beautiful mm -hmm. thing is, you can customize it all to your brand, so it looks like it's all coming from you. It's not cookie cutter, it's not some sort of boilerplate, because I do get a lot of questions about that. And you can make sure that you're going into the membership area, you're picking the templates that make sense for your ideal client, and the other thing is everything is already written. So a lot of people will say to me, well, I don't, I don't like to write. I don't know how to write good stuff. I like, and they're just like, they're very upset about this, <laughs> like for yeah. real. And so everything is already written for you, but it's very easy to edit. You know, it's like going back and proofreading an email that you wrote and just, you know, making a, an adjustment here and there using your photos or using our stock photos, whatever you want to do, it's already been done for you so that there's no excuse now. Now you can have a sales funnel and it doesn't have to take months. That is amazing. That is a, I know that's a huge pain point. Even for people who are slightly good at writing, it's hard sometimes to write like about yourself or write to like a whole email list and you're just like, ah, I just want somebody to, you know, kind of, you know, help me, help me get the outline and then I can fill in the blanks. Like that's, that's genius. So I know that's going to be super valuable um, for, for anyone in the home services industry, but especially right now where we're like, yeah, I want to be working on my business, but I've got like 50 other things going on in the background. And so to have that help and save so much time, it's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. It really does help people. And we recently have also added blog post templates because a lot of people are like, I know I need to be blogging. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. I, I like, they just, there are so many roadblocks because they don't have time because they're not sure what topics are going to work. They don't know how to optimize a blog post for SEO and blogging is so important for SEO. So we put a lot of emphasis on that and we help it all come full, full circle so that you have the SEO working for you in the background on your website. You have the sales funnel also bringing you in new leads and it just makes sure that as a business owner, you can look at your marketing and feel confident knowing that you're doing absolutely everything that you should be doing. That way you don't have that little irritating thought in the back of your mind like, Am I supposed to run a Google ad? Am I supposed to boost a Facebook post? What am I supposed to do yeah. here? Because that's a terrible feeling. So yeah, none of that in socialite fault. We take the paranoia out of marketing. Mm, that's, a, that. that's, a, that's a really good tagline. Is that official? It is it not. I think it, our, <laughs> marketing be. is simplified, but <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, Kate, tell everybody where they can find you. You have an amazing podcast, so start there. And then uh, obviously um, give them just... Tell them where to go from here. Sure. So my podcast is The Kate Show, and you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. And you can also go over to my marketing membership, which contains all the things I just told you about at socialitevault.com. And if anyone wants other services, I, I have multiple brands. So the other one is katethesocialite.com. There's a lot to choose from, but it's all very specific to the home industry. Um, incredible. So valuable. Thank you so much. These are, I mean, really great takeaways from today. And I know um, getting to have this, getting to have this conversation in sort of a very updated of what's happening right now is always really important too, because, you know, marketing is not just like a, a one-time thing that you do. It is something that has to continue to evolve. So I love that you um, have created this resource where people can continue to uh, work on it and have it be relevant to their ideal client. Great, great tips. Thank Melissa, you so much. I'm going to go uh, find a picture of my ideal client and I'm going to just put her up on my wall and talk to her for the rest of the day. I think that's, really, that's what I've decided. Yeah. Oh, All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Kate, for being here. Thank you, Melissa, for guest hosting with me. And we will talk to you all next time. Thank you so much for listening in to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to get our roadmap for success as a pro organizer, head straight to www.poroadmap.com.